Hi, I'm Dr. Kyle Montgomery, and in this uh, problem here, we'll be looking at another operational amplifier, another op-amp circuit. Uh, specifically, in this case, we have the case of an inverting amplifier. We know that it's inverting because of the fact that we see sources. Here we have two, actually two different sources, but they're both uh, tied into the negative terminal of our op-amp, thereby uh, automatically informing us, basically, that our output voltage V0 is going to have to be inverted from whatever, with respect to whatever the two voltages on the input happen to be. We see that actually because these two voltages are oriented plus to minus, uh, therefore th these are positive quantities, we should know that our output is going to be some negative quantity with respect to that, and then we just need to figure out what exactly that amplification would be, which again would be based on the various resistors that we have sitting in our circuit. Okay, so first of all, I'll take a quick minute to copy this down, and we'll, then we'll get into approaching how we come up with the various currents, I1 and I2, that are indicated here, as well as our output voltage across the 5 kilo ohm resistor, and then also uh, the current I0 specifically, which is the current I've indicated as coming out of the output terminal from the op amp. Okay, so just pause the video real quick and go ahead and do that, and then we'll jump right into it. Okay, so the first thing in, in looking at any type, again, of op, any type of op-amp circuit type of problem is sort of evaluating initially based on the known input condition, based on the fact that uh, we're assuming this is an ideal op-amp and we're operating in the linear mode of operation. Again, that tells us that the two input terminals need to be basically at the same potential, right? So if this is Vn and Vp again, we know that they're at the same potential. And here specifically, now we look at the case of how we know how those two are related. We see that VP is tied to the ground, to zero uh, volts, and therefore VN also must be tied to ground or be at zero potential, basically. So we know that at each of these points here, since these are connected by a wire, it's going to be at zero volts potential, a zero volt potential here. Uh, this is otherwise uh, indicated as a, or, or called a virtual null. Okay, just indicating that even though the negative input terminal is not directly tied to ground, it's virtually tied to ground in a sense because of the fact that it's sitting at the same potential as whatever the uh, uh, positive input of our op-amp circuit happens to be. Okay, so knowing that fact uh, is, again, the ver most important step in, in being able to set up the problem because now we can more easily identify what uh, I1 and I2 are specifically uh, because you see that in this case I1 is the current flowing through this one kilo ohm resistor and so we just need to add, figure out well what's the voltage drop across there and then we would be able to calculate the current well we know that we have this one volt source so coming from ground we're increasing by one volt and therefore since we're going back to ground we know that that one volt increase has to be the voltage drop across my one kilo ohm resistor there specifically so then by just by ohm's law we could say that i1 <coughs> is going to be equal to uh, one volt divided by the one kilo ohm resistance, uh, thereby giving us a current of one milliamp, all right? Now, similarly for I2, which is just indicated along the lower branch here, we see that we have an increase of two volts, and then that has to drop back down to zero, so therefore that tells us that, that two volts from this source is gonna be entirely dropped across that two kilo ohm resistor. And so setting up a similar equation in that case would be, this is two volts over two kilo ohm resistor here. <coughs> Uh, give us again also current of one milliamps. All right. So now in figuring out what is V naught sitting over here specifically, uh, now V naught is indicated as the voltage rise from ground uh, here up to this point, which is the output terminal. And then we see again, sort of following this loop around, sort of again thinking in the mindset of what uh, KVL would tell us, uh, that tells us that that voltage. V naught sitting right here has to then drop back across this 10 kilo ohm resistor because again this is this node here is sitting at zero volt potential so this is indicating that uh, this is minus V naught to sorry V naught to plus as indicated such because we're having an increase of V naught and then the same amount of voltage whatever V naught happens to be has to then drop across the 10 kilo ohm resistance. So then we just say, well, what is the current that would be traveling through this 10 kilo ohm resistor up here? And in this case, we already know, we already have figured out I1 and I2, which I'll just again indicate this over here, both one milliamp. 
And now looking at a KCL through, let's say, this node, because of the fact that we know that there can't be any current flow going into the input terminals, again, based on this is a fact of an ideal op amp, uh, that would tell us that I1 plus I2 have to be the current going here. So let me indicate this as just I3. All right, so I'm saying that I3, which is the current going through the 10 kilo ohm resistor, would have to be equal to I1 plus I2, yeah, which of course would just then be two milliamps. So now if I know the current traveling through that 10 kilo ohm resistor, I can figure out that voltage V naught uh, is going to be the current, <coughs> two milliamps, times the resistance, 10 kilo ohms. Uh, but in this case, it'll be actually negative because again, uh, note how we've defined or how we've figured out what the voltage across that resistor have to be. It would have to be from negative to positive, which is um, sort of in the opposite direction as we'd expect for the drop across the resistor with respect to the direction of the current. So that's why we have to indicate this as a negative right here, uh, thereby giving us negative 20 volts for our voltage at the output V naught. Okay. Now for the final current then, um, for I naught specifically, um, let me go ahead and kind of erase this work that I've done, then we'll talk about how we can figure out that current specifically. Okay, so for figuring out the current I naught, the current coming out of the output of my op amp, again, we could do a KCL type of equation at this node where I've indicated what, where V naught is. Um, which would tell me that the currents coming in are I3, uh, and I'm going to indicate currents coming in as negative, so I want to say negative I3 minus I0 would be, um, and then go traveling out, if I indicate a current traveling out in this down the branch across uh, the drop across V0 with respect to the 5 kilo ohm resistor, that would be plus V0 over five kilo ohms would have to be equal to zero. Again, just a case simple KCL expression there. Um, so now then solving for I naught, here we would have I naught is equal to uh, V naught, we've indicated as 20 volts, or negative 20 volts rather, over five kilo ohms. Um, and then I'd have um, minus my I three current. Okay, whereas my I3 current we previously had calculated to be uh, two milliamps here, so this was two milliamps. All right, so 20 volts over five kilo ohms would be my negative four milliamps minus two milliamps, giving me a total current of negative six, six milliamps right here. Okay. And again, this is just found by writing a KCL equation here, or kind of separate here, a KCL equation right here based on this node where we have indicated V naught specifically, all right? So to quickly recap here, a uh, really important part about this uh, circuit configuration was to note this virtual null, which was to say that because we know the condition under the ideal case for the op amp needs to be that our two input terminals are at the same potential, and we already had one of those that was grounded, therefore the other uh, input VN would also have to be at a virtual null or a zero potential. And that allowed us then to then calculate the currents through these two respective branches, thereby allowing us to figure out the voltage drop across this 10 kilo ohm resistor, which we knew had to be equivalent to the voltage drop across the 5 kilo ohm resistor, um, then figure out the currents to ultimately figure out how much current is traveling out from the op amp, uh, which was a value of negative 6 milliamps, okay? So I hope that makes sense, and I hope to see you again on the next video.